Welcome back. In this video, I will review the experimental procedure for determining RNA. I intend to concentrate on X-ray crystallography in particular. RNA has three structural types. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary structures have a simple nucleotide sequence. Secondary structures have nucleotides folded, and tertiary structures have knots. RNA molecules serve a wide range of functions that are closely linked to their structures. The basic structural units of RNA consist of single and double-stranded regions. In order to carry out advanced functions such as catalysis and ligand binding, certain types of RNAs can adopt higher-order structures. The analysis of RNA structures has progressed alongside advancements in structural biology techniques, but it comes with its own set of challenges and corresponding solutions. Recent advances in RNA structure analysis techniques, including structural probing methods, X-ray crystallography, nuclear magnetic resonance, cryo-electron microscopy, and small angle X ray scattering. Often, a combination of multiple techniques is employed for the integrated analysis of RNA structures. Let's go over the X ray crystallography in detail. X ray crystallography is a traditional and widely used method for analyzing the structure of biomacromolecules. One of its key advantages is that it can determine the structure of molecules without size limitations and often yields high-resolution information. Over its more than 100 years of development, X-ray crystallography has become a well-established technique, benefiting from advancements such as automatic crystallization screening, synchrotron facilities with brilliant X-ray light, and a wealth of software tools for data collection, processing, and structure determination. In the field of RNA structure determination, X-ray crystallography remains the dominant technique, accounting for approximately 62% of the 1663 RNA-only structures deposited in the PDB. To perform XRC analysis, Biomacromolecules need to be crystallized through screening precipitants, salts, temperatures, and sample concentrations. Various commercial crystallization kits, including those specifically designed for nucleic acids, can facilitate the initial screening process. Once crystals are obtained, they are subjected to X-ray diffraction, typically at synchrotron facilities, to measure the amplitudes of structural factors. Let's understand the process in detail. The three components needed to complete an X-ray crystallography analysis are an RNA crystal, a source of X-rays, and a detector. The process begins by crystallizing an RNA of interest. The crystallization of molecules causes all the atoms to be oriented in a fixed way toward one another, while still maintaining their biologically active conformations. Solving the structure of a novel RNA by X-ray crystallography requires a means to obtain initial phase estimates. This is a challenge because many of the tools available for solving protein structures are not available for RNA. We have developed a reliable means to use hexamine cations to address this challenge. To introduce heavy atoms into RNA crystals, soaking methods are commonly used. Iridium has emerged as a popular choice and has been utilized to phase nearly half of the recently determined RNA structures. The soaking process can be facilitated by engineering GU wobble pairs in RNA helices, as they provide high affinity binding sites for trivalent hexamine complex ions, such as cobalt, iridium, and osmium. Alternatively, 
Heavy atoms can be covalently incorporated during the chemical synthesis of RNA. This method is similar to incorporating selenium labeled methionine into recombinantly expressed proteins. However, this approach is limited to RNA molecules smaller than 60 nucleotides in length, as chemical synthesis becomes challenging beyond this size range. Bromo substituted nucleosides are frequently used in RNA crystallography. RNA crystals tend to decay rapidly when exposed to X rays. Thus, diffraction data are generally collected from RNA crystals at cryogenic temperatures. Compounds used in protein crystal stabilization are useful for RNA crystals as well. These include sugars and non-volatile alcohols, such as glucose, glycerol, 2-methyl-2, 4-pentanediol, and low-molecular weight polyethylene glycols. In addition, volatile alcohols, such as ethanol and isopropanol, have been useful in RNA crystal cryostabilization. Typically, the cryoprotectant should constitute at least 15 to 20 percent of the soaking solution for the crystals. Two kinds of transition metal ions have been used with great success in RNA crystallography. First, lanthanide series cations contributed to solving the structures of transfer RNA, the hammerhead ribozyme, and the group I intron P4P6 domain. Second, osmium, 3, hexamine provided the high-resolution phasing for the P4P6 domain structure. In the second step, the crystal is placed in an intense beam of X-rays, usually of a single wavelength, producing the regular pattern of reflections. X-rays can be generated in four different ways by bombarding a metal source with a beam of high-energy electrons, by exposing a substance to a primary beam of X-rays to create a secondary beam of X-ray fluorescence, from a radioactive decay process that generates X-rays and from a synchrotron radiation source. The scattering of X-rays is also known as X-ray diffraction. Such scattering results from the interaction of the electric and magnetic fields of the radiation with the electrons in the atoms of the crystal. The angles and intensities of diffracted X-rays are measured, with each compound having a unique diffraction pattern. As the crystal is gradually rotated, previous reflections disappear and new ones appear. The intensity of every spot is recorded at every orientation of the crystal. Multiple data sets may have to be collected, with each set covering slightly more than half a full rotation of the crystal and typically containing tens of thousands of reflections. The patterns are a result of interference between the diffracted X-rays governed by Bragg's law, which is stated below. D is the distance between two regions of electron density. Theta is the angle of diffraction. Lambda is the wavelength of the diffracted X-ray and N is an integer. If the angle of reflection satisfies the following condition, the diffracted X-rays will interfere constructively. Otherwise, destructive interference occurs. Constructive interference indicates that the diffracted X-rays are in phase or lined up with each other, while destructive interference indicates that the X-rays are not exactly in phase with each other. The result is that the measured intensity of the X-rays increases and decreases as a function of the angle and distance between the detector and the crystal. The X-rays that have been scattered in various directions are then caught on X-ray film, which shows a blackening of the emulsion in proportion to the intensity of the scattered X-rays hitting the film, or by a solid-state detector. 
The intensities of the spots and their positions are thus the basic experimental data of the analysis. Once the electron density map has been made, the analysis of the crystallographic data is relatively straightforward. It does, however, require complex mathematics to make sense of the information. In the early days of X-ray crystallography, these calculations were done by hand, but now computers are used to perform them. The calculation used is called the Fourier transformation. This calculation transforms the data into a three-dimensional representation of the atomic or molecular structure of the sample molecule or material. Don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos and click the bell icon for the most recent ones.